All right, we want to welcome uh, the rest of you who were not here two weeks ago. We have decided actually to open it uh, to the rest because part of this leadership course tells us that you don't need to learn to be a leader after you're appointed a leader. And somehow he says that once you're a leader, it is a bit too late to learn. So it's good to learn now. Uh, and of course, uh, when we learn about leadership, our goal is not uh, to achieve positional leadership. We'll talk more about this uh, today when we talk about the five different levels of leadership. Uh, the goal, our goal is not to, to uh, achieve a certain position. I think the echo is a bit too high. No, there's some reverb at the back. So, <clears throat> So our goal is not to achieve certain position in the leadership, and uh, so don't don't uh, feel as if that because you come, we will pick you and put you someplace. All right, but I feel more than just position, we are discovering purpose in our life, uh, because one of the the first chapter to leadership that we studied last week, we haven't finished that chapter, uh, is the issue of influence and uh, who influence us and how we can influence people and uh, whether you uh, realize it or not if you are father you have certain influence over your family if you are mother also you have certain influence over your family and uh, a simple thing like somehow we do influence some people at some point of time for example if you say oh i think the best roti canai is this place shall we go you have influence a few people to go eat roti canai all right uh, so uh, but uh, to put a bigger picture uh, i believe god created us with a purpose in life whether it is uh, that purpose is to be fulfilled uh, within the church or without the church or both, all right? Whether in ministry or even outside in your profession, in your business, uh, it's always good to, uh, to understand that God has a purpose uh, for our life. And so uh, even when we, when we pray, this has been my prayer the last a uh, few months that say God you can still use me I believe so use me for your kingdom and for your glory and so if that's our prayer that God will use us in other words we are telling God God we need to realize and know our purpose uh, in life that we are focused in the way uh, we live especially if we are leaders so the first chapter is on influence and also the next chapter as we will do that the next time is on priorities which I think also is very very powerful very important to know what is important most important for you to do uh, every day your priorities uh, so that your priorities can be put in uh, the right uh, perspective then after that we talk about character I think as a leader it is so important to adopt and to have a uh, good character all right but today let me just for the sake of those uh, who have joined us thank you very much for coming we are glad that you are here and we trust that you have the book those who just came do you have the ebook it have been passed around it can be in your phone if you have a tablet of course it's a bit bigger uh, if you can, investing in a, in a tablet is nice because uh, I start reading from this. The phone is a little bit too small for me and uh, reading from this uh, is helpful. Okay, now let's go to lesson. Uh, I want to quickly just go through with you, uh, skim through lesson one. Uh, we went through this and uh, we talk about the definition of leadership is uh, influence I, and I like what they say a person or leader who have no one following him is only taking a walk so many leader uh, if you have nobody following you you are just taking a walk and so a leader have a certain uh, extent 
of the ability to influence others. I share with you one incident, I think it was last leaders meeting that I was in, uh, I was a guest speaker in our church. I won't tell you what church it is. I was a guest speaker in the church and uh, before I went up to preach, uh, the pastor stood up and says, uh, can I have all of you move in front? And uh, after a while, nobody did. I think that uh, either he's, he's having a lot of trouble influencing his people. Nobody did. I turned around, nobody came up to sit in front. I don't know why. And so after a while, the pastor smiled, tried to give an excuse and say, oh, maybe you are very comfortable in your seat. So even to influence somebody to come to the front, uh, it's a challenge uh, for him. All right? And so influence is, uh, I think uh, he believes that, the author believes that everything about leadership sets on influence, and I believe uh, it is the same too. What, whenever I do something, I'm influencing, even when I'm preaching. All right? When I preach, I'm influencing. When I preach on a theme on love, I'm influencing. When I preach on prayer, I'm influencing. You are influencing people to do that which is good and that is right. And it is different from manipulating. I think manipulating is, is bad, it's negative. Uh, manipulation has to do with you are manipulating people for self-interest. That means uh, for my good. I manipulate people to follow me for my group. Many cult group, many, uh, 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 as I was telling you last, like two weeks ago, I was, uh, I was watching a series on, uh, on this serial killer. He's able to manipulate a few people that follow him. Uh, or robber, uh, some of them can be good leaders, but they go deeper than just influence. They begin to manipulate. All right? And sometimes when you are not able to influence, you manipulate. All right? For example, okay, uh, a mother, if they can't get their children to do something, all right, uh, to uh, give them some money, something like that. Kids are all grown up, give them some money. So they start manipulating. Uh, mother is sick, la, nobody cares for mother. La, you know, we're old already, la, we don't have enough money, la, we are suffering. La. So this is a form of manipulation uh, as well. So manipulation is it's very bad, it's very negative. And it shows that you have uh, no power of influence. Now, influence is a positive manner to get people, to gather people to do the right thing. All right? And so we have many influential leaders in the Bible. And uh, Moses was one of them. It's not easy to influence an entire community to leave Egypt. All right? They did not believe him right at the beginning, but God was there to help him, and God showed many signs and wonders. And through that signs and wonders, uh, they began to believe that God has chosen uh, Moses. So in the same way, I speak to uh, you, cell leaders, that uh, if God has laid things upon your heart, if God has spoken to you, and uh, if you simply follow and obey God and uh, uh, do uh, what is right, and uh, the Lord will be there uh, for you. The Lord will work for you. The Lord will cause people to open their eyes and know that uh, His favor is upon you. And so when that happens, it makes uh, influence uh, much easier. So, you need to differentiate between influencing and manipulating. Manipulating, you can, you can have self-pity, you can uh, bring in a lot of negative things, you can uh, even tell lies to manipulate people to follow you or to do certain things, all right? Then we go very quickly, why many people don't develop as leaders. Are you following me? Uh, we will just skim through this one. Why? Many people don't develop as leaders because some of them think I'm not a, 
I'm not a born leader, so I can't lead. Uh, we have come to a con conclusion. Is that the PA or the sound or the thunder? Oh, it's going to rain. All right. Um, conclusion that uh, I believe uh, that everyone can be trained, can be taught to be a leader. Some may be born with certain stronger characteristics all right, to lead. But everyone can learn to be a leader, can train to be a leader. If you are a quiet type, a soft kind, I have spoken to many men who are fathers. Some fathers need to be stronger than you are. You need to understand some um, making decisions sometimes can be difficult. There are certain decisions I find very hard to make. But I realize that I have to make it because I am the leader. All right? So don't push responsibility to your wife or to someone else when it comes to uh, making decisions. So everyone can. So you don't think that, oh, just because I'm not a leader, I don't need to come for a seminar like this. A title and seniority will automatically make me a leader. This is another fallacy. We think that once I'm appointed to be a cell leader, then that makes me a leader. All right? And then we go quickly, work experience will automatically make me a leader. Just because you have worked for many years, you think that automatically uh, you will be a leader. And let me also say this. Uh, everything on the same level. Why is it some workers, okay, talking about your office, why is it some workers do better than others? Why is it some get promotion better than others? I think maybe it has to do with character, it has to do with leadership, it has to do with certain principles. If you are a soft kind, if uh, you uh, do not wish to learn, uh, leadership principle and learn to be stronger, learn to be more decisive, learn to make a good decision. And when you make wrong one, you you make a U-turn, you uh, you apologize, and instead of giving excuses all the time, that brings an edge between you and your colleague. All right, and that's why some people uh, get uh, singled out for better position uh, in workplace, uh, even in business, uh, because you, you have a certain character, certain, uh, uh, certain values in your life that uh, you can do uh, better in business. All right? Why? Because, because people trust you. All right? So all this has to do with leadership as well. And people trust you, you're honest. Uh, then you find that people will, f will look for you. Work experience will automatically make me a leader. We have done that. In I'm waiting until I get a position to start developing as a leader. As I have said just now, when you get that position, it probably is a little late. Never late. Nothing is too late. But it's a little late to start learning. So you better start learning now. How will you develop the leader Within you, uh, then it says here, leadership is the ability to obtain followers. No point being a leader if you have no followers. Okay, so uh, to begin with, to begin with, uh, one of the most challenging uh, leadership in getting followers is if you have teenage children. All right, are your teenage children following you? All right. Do they enjoy following you? Which is uh, very, very uh, important. Some parents have difficulty getting their children to follow them, even to go for a holiday or to go and watch a movie. You know, uh, I know some young people don't want to go with their parents. They are square parents to watch movie, and uh, this all has to do with influence. Okay, I tell you, all my kids love going movie with me. I don't know why. Yeah, I suggest to them, maybe because I'm paying for the ticket, but uh, 
I don't think that's the only reason, okay? So, but uh, they have no qualms going out, you know, with me. And uh, I think uh, one of the great challenges is having your teenager uh, following. Leadership is the ability to obtain followers. We did that, and then we go on. Insights about influence. Everybody influences someone, and that is true. Okay, you can identify even even a teenager in school. You may have influenced somebody, all right? Influence somebody in terms of uh, going where for a holiday, going for even if we ever have a camp again. I don't know whenever we can have. I'm slotted to be a camp speaker from last year to this year, maybe to next year. <laughs> Same church say, okay, last year cannot already. This year don't know can or not. It's supposed to be August. I don't think can. So next year, I'll say, okay, I'll next year. So. Uh, to be able to get somebody to go for camp, you know, as I was saying last, uh, to, uh, last lesson, uh, if you're a cell leader, you need to influence your members if it is going for a camp or going for a retreat. Because sometimes you will come to me and say, Pastor, nobody wants to go. Uh, if, you, if you ask me, I, I cannot accept that as a good answer. All right? You don't say, Pastor, no, nobody in my cell, lead, cell group want to go. Then I feel, what have you been doing? You're a cell leader. You must be able to do so much, say so much, to influence, if not the whole cell, at least half the cell to go for a camp or for a retreat or to go for you know, uh, uh, a trip somewhere, a day trip. All right? So, it probably has to do uh, with your ability to influence, okay? Uh, maybe, as I said, some leaders are influenced by their members, all right? Uh, not very good. Huh? You say, oh, pastor, nobody want to go for a retreat. I also not going. <laughs> so, it's like you are being influenced by them, all right? Nobody want to go. I also don't want to go because they don't want to go. Actually, they are influencing you. So as a leader, you cannot and should not accept that uh, as an answer. All right? So sometimes uh, it is the power of influence. And then we don't always know who or how much we influence. This is true. Uh, you don't know your lifestyle, the things that you do, uh, how indirectly yeah, you have influenced uh, some people. Uh, I, there was one youth ses session, uh, pastor's kid session some years ago, and uh, we were sitting down and sharing uh, about family and all that. And so one youth who is now, uh, he's already a young adult, uh, I think he, he, he's a pastor already, he said, you know, what really influenced me was when every morning I hear my father praying in the room. You know? So he wasn't aware. So I heard my father praying in the room, praying in the spirit, praying in the room. That uh, really influenced me to, to pray, to pursue God, and to love God. So many things you do or don't do, uh, May, you may not realize it, you are influencing people. It can be the cell group, it can be church people, it can be your family, but like it or not, I, I want to be a very positive influence uh, to my children. A little too late, now they are already away, you know, but uh, uh, thank God for all of them. My wife, very happy with them. I'm happy with them as well. Uh, we can talk many things and... Uh, uh, many of my messages, all right, when they were young, uh, they, they heard a lot of my messages. And those messages still linger on in their, in their mind, all right, in their mind. So sometimes when uh, Jonan, especially when he was uh, uh, with me, when he was in secondary school, I think form four, form five already, you know, when he was with me, and we are going for a camp or going for a conference. Before the service, he will ask me, Pastor, Daddy, Daddy, what are you going to preach tonight? You know? Daddy, what are you going to preach tonight? Then when I give him the topic, 
uh, some he heard before. Oh, that one uh, I heard before that day. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. So he remembers. All right? So some of these things that I do may not be purposeful, but they see our lifestyle. All right? the, the things that we do. That's why it is so important, especially at home. Uh, I, uh, I ever preach a sermon to Pastor's Kid I entitled my message, From Behind the Pulpit. Uh, from Behind the Pulpit means you are all standing in front of the pulpit, you hear, you hear me preach. But there's a group of people who is behind, who knows everything at home. And they are my family. All right? So behind the pulpit, more important than in front of the pulpit. All right? So if you are a leader, okay, so what you say in the cell group, very important. Because your wife knows you better. All right? Or your husband know you better, right? So uh, a leader, a leader is consistent, whether he's at home, in a shop, in a car. In a car, I must confess. Sometimes I get a bit upset with people who are in front of me. Uh, I don't curse and swear, but uh, I get a bit upset. All right. But I was sat in a pastor's car. Oh my goodness, he complains all the way. He's, he's so tense, you know, in the car when the way he drives and he get he scold everybody. Everybody comes by, overtake him, or too slow, you overtake them. And I say, oh my goodness, this fellow, uh, I must pray for him, you know. And so where you are, uh, you need to be consistently uh, influencing. Okay, now the best investment in tomorrow is to develop your influence today so i like to encourage you and challenge you to think about your tomorrow your future what is going to be like if you are if you are a teenager if you're a teenager i think it's a very good start very good start to think about what your life is going to be and uh, you think about tomorrow uh, being a right influence and of course for the rest of us definitely it is not too late. So we're going to talk about the five level of leadership. I think we stopped here, right? The five level of leadership. And uh, what we did was we take turns to read, which is uh, very helpful. So uh, we begin, uh, last lesson, we begin in the front. Today we begin from the back. Okay. Right from the back. We will have... Uh, the one sitting right at the back, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, you read the first uh, two paragraphs, the five levels of leadership. Can or not? Okay. Stand up and read loud. Loud. Can I see ya? Can I? Okay, I'm sorry. Can't see ya. Where your spec? Okay, then we jump to uh, Kelvin. Can or Kelvin? Where's your book, Kelvin? Huh? Where's your book? <laughs> Didn't bring up. Uh. Take out your mask. Uh. Not very hard to read. The way the book, the book won't get COVID. People who have been appointed to a post. Hey, hey, hey my, where are you? The five level of leadership. Okay. The when I began studying influence. No page huh, in my ebook. Ha huh, page what? Twenty one. Oh, the level one position. Consider what do you rely on for your authority? Hola. <laughs> I say so now. I realize how many people are following me. I uh. Huh? The five level of leadership. Ah. When, uh, 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. Everybody on the same page or not? I know some of you searching. Okay. Are you on the same page? No, no. Um, that is before, just two pages before the, the, the chart. You got it? Okay. For your information, if you want the book to be printed for you, uh, we can work on it. Okay. Uh, Li Chan, very good. She can get the book printed. How much is it? 40. Plus postage and uh, handling charges, 120, okay? <laughs> uh, 34, 34, 35, lah, uh, 34 something, 35. If you want the book to be printed, you can see Li Chan, okay? Okay, start, huh? All right, here we go. Okay, the five wait, level. Wait, 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 still finding. Some people still finding. Don't ask Sam to find. Sam can't see the book. How you ask him to find the file? Can I? I? So, some of our leaders are lost. <laughs> huh? Okay? Got it? Okay. okay. The five level of leadership. When I began studying influence, I also drew upon my own leadership experience and what I observed in leaders I respected and admired. What I discovered is that influence can be developed in five stages. I turned two stages into a two that I call the five levels of leadership. It provides a model of influence that can help you better understand the dynamics of leadership. And it also creates a roadmap you can follow to develop influence with others. I've been teaching this model of leadership for more than 30 years, and I can count the number of people it's helped. I hope it helps you in the same way it has others. Take a look at the gra graphic of the five levels. As you work to develop influence with others, your goal is to earn each level and add it to the dynamics of your relationship with others. Most of the time, that occurs in order from level one up through the levels. However, that's not always true. You can develop more than one level simultaneously. Let's examine each of the levels, you quickly get a handle on how they work. Okay, if you flip two pages down, you will see the chart that will give you an overview of what we're going to learn. Uh, the first level is called position, second level is permission, third level is production, and the fourth level is people, people development, and the last level is Pinnacle, pinnacle, all right? So you have this five level and you can develop uh, all of them together or you can develop a few levels together as you work on the next. And also, you can also ask yourself at what level you are at best and how you can move from there, okay? Let's go to uh, Island, we'll read level one, position. Level 1 position. Uh, the most basic entry level of leadership is the position level. Why is this the lowest level? Because position represents leadership before a leader has developed any real influence with the people being led. In generations past, people would follow leaders simply because they possess a title or position of authority.
but that is not very common today in American culture. People will follow a positional leader only as far as they have to. When I took my first job as a leader in 1969, people were respectful of me. They were kind, but I had no real influence. I was 22. They could see how little I knew, even if I couldn't. I found out how little influence I had when I led my first board meeting. I started the meeting with my agenda in hand, but then uh, Claude. Claude started to talk. He was just an old farmer, but everyone in the room looked to him for leadership. Whatever he said held the most weight. Claude, Claude. wasn't pushy or disrespectful. He didn't do a power play. He didn't have to. He already had all the power. He just wanted to get things done. All right, continue. Just finish that page. It's very clear to me now that in that first job, I was a leader living on level one. All I had going for me at first was my position, along with a good work ethic and a desire to make a difference. I learned more on level one than at any other time in my early years of leading. I figured out pretty quickly that a title and position won't get a person very far in leadership. All right, you get that? So he compared himself with Claude, the farmer. The farmer has been there and at it for years. And he just joined in and was the maybe the director or chairman of the board. He speak, there wasn't much influence, but a farmer who speak, everybody listen to him so uh, the first level of leadership basically is from the area of position a lot of people tell me oh uh, if i'm appointed as cell leader then only i can lead but uh, of course you can learn a lot about leadership once you're in position but position is not where you should stay right you should move on in the levels of influence more than just position. Now, people respect, uh, for example, uh, uh, a pastor. So if I walk into a church, I'm the new pastor and, uh, uh, of a church, and people will listen to me because I'm the pastor. All right? And I could get them to think, to do so much. Uh, that's all. And beyond that, it's going to take more than just my position to be able to influence others to get more things done, which I think it is very important. All right. So he said that he learned much. Uh, we do learn. Sometimes when we are put in a position, we start learning. The problem is some people never want to learn. Okay, and and if they don't learn, they will never grow and they will never improve, all right? And, uh, well, we have a great leader in Malaysia who lead only from position, but he's a poor leader, all right? And, uh, and I think one of the, actually one of the good leaders in Malaysia is Mahathir, but he lead for the wrong purpose, lah. but he's a very influential leader. Like it or not, he's very influential, okay? Maybe also be of money. Lah. Najib also is influential, but hey, Najib is not a, chik, young, uh, a stupid chiku. No? He's very smart. Very smart. And he knows how to play his game well. All right? But very corrupted. If these people are not corrupted, our nation would fly. You know? Really, I'm uh, thinking uh, they are, if they are so good, uh, the nation will fly. But it's just that they have gone to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Which is, uh, which is bad. As I said, a bank rob, a bank, a, a, a gang rob, robber's leader is a good leader. Not easy to lead entire group to rob a bank. He's a good leader, but he leads for a wrong purpose. All right? Okay. 
Now, let's go on. So, we need to uh, let's study a little bit more about uh, the issue of uh, position one. In front of Sam, who's that? Justina. Mutu. Who are you? Your mask so big, I can't see, only your eye only. Can you read? No, cannot read. Janet, can you read? Cannot read. Why? Eh? Okay, it's up there. Can you read? Also, we need to read. All right, Adrian, can you read? Oh, I can recognize some of you. Adrian can. Okay, people who have been appointed. Read from there. Where are you now? No, no, no. Uh, 24, page 24. Down, down, down. I'm oh, getting heavy. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Down, down, down. Down, down. Down some more. Down, move down, down, down some more. Hey, move up some more. Sorry, sorry. Move up some more. <laughs> move up some more. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, very good. Okay, uh, Adrian. People who have been appointed to a position may have authority, but that authority doesn't exceed their job description. Positional leaders have certain rights. They have the right to enforce the rules. They have the right to tell people to do their jobs. They have the right to use whatever power they have been granted. But real leadership is more than having granted authority. Position is a good place to start in leadership, but it's a terrible place to stay. Anyone who have never who never leads a the level leads beyond position depends on territorial rights, protocol, tradition, and organizational charts. These things are not inherit in inherently negative, negative mm. unless they become the basis for authority. They have poor substi sub substitutes for leadership skills. If you have been in a leadership position for any length of time, how do you know whether you are relying too much on your position to lead? Here are three common characteristics of positional leaders. Okay, I hope you understand what positional leader is. A positional leader uh, exercises his authority out of his position. I ask you to do because I am the leader. Or I'm the pastor, I'm the cell leader, I'm the boss, I'm the director. You better do because I as a director is telling you to do. And so maybe some of our people who do it, they may do it unwillingly. Or they may follow you unwillingly because uh, you, you did not move on from positional leadership. And we will talk more about this later on. The next level is permission means where people begin to allow you to lead them, all right? Not because uh, you have a title or a position, but because they begin to like you, all right? Now, let's go on to uh, some of the signs of a uh, positional leader. And we have Ding. Ding, will you read that? Positional leaders look for security based on the title more than talent. Here's a story about a private during World War I who saw a light in his trench on battlefield and shouted, put out that match. Much to his chagrin, he discovered that the offender was General Black Jack Pershing. Fearing severe punishment, the private tried to stammer out an apology, but General Pershing patted him on the back and said, that's all right, son. Just be glad I'm not a second lieutenant. The higher people's level of ability and the resulting influence, the more secure and confident they become. A new second lieutenant might be tempted to rely on his rank and use it as a weapon. A general doesn't need to. Yeah, so general is like, uh, he is secured, all right? One who have reached a pinnacle at the top of leadership, uh, he experienced certain security. He's not afraid. Uh, like in this uh, situation where, you know, uh, 
some people, uh, I've been to, uh, I've been invited many times to camps and during camps, you know, they have preludes and uh, there's a makan, then we have, uh, you know, mixing and I'm around, you know, and sometimes we meet them in a, in a, what they call, uh, in a lift, lift, right? And uh, they, they look at me, they just talk lah, something lah, you know, sometimes they talk nonsense. Then the, during service, they come to, oh, sorry, pastor, I didn't know you're a pastor. I didn't know you're a guest speaker. Sorry, I say first day to be sorry about. <laughs> I don't want, I don't need to, uh, I mean, you can be normal with me lah. Huh? Okay lah. As long as you didn't uh, curse and swear in front of me, then there's nothing to be sorry about. Huh? So, uh, a positional, uh, 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 leader who has reached certain level of leadership is very secure in his position and in his calling. All right? Now, let's go to the next, next one. Positional leaders re rely on their leader's influence instead of their own. Okay. Julie! Yes, Pastor. How are you? Fine, thank you. Long time no see. Chinese church. Ah, yeah. Sometimes she can't <laughs> bring the mother for Chinese church. Just now, so I was rushing here. A Chinese bit late. Huh? Send my mom back oh, first. Oh, send your mom back. Yeah. Go all the way to Maru. Huh? The charm. Maru, now MCO. E oh, MCO. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, who, uh, <laughs> who's that? Is in M Maru, who's that? What's his name? Ah, Leon. Leon. I haven't seen Leon so for a while. Mother not well. Came. Leon came. No. Yeah, Julie, she, she, I, I meet her when I preach for Chinese church. Chinese service, Chinese church. So bring the mother there. You understand or not? Yes. You Chinese at? No. Master Christo speaks in Cantonese. Ma. Ah, Cantonese can understand. Uh, I don't know Mandarin. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Positional so, leaders rely on their leaders' influence instead of their own. Baseball Hall of Farmer Neo Drusher, who managed the Giants from 1948 to 1955, was once coaching at first base in an exhibition game played at the United States Military Academy at West Point. During the game, a noisy cadet kept shouting at Drusher, trying to get under his skin. Hey, Drusher, he hollered, how did a little squid like you get into the major leagues? Drusher shouted back, my congressman appointed me. Just because people may be appointed to a position of authority doesn't ultimately mean that it can develop influence because some positional leaders can't and possess no influence or authority of their own. They rely on the authority of their boss or the person who appointed them. Anytime they feel that their team members won't follow them, they are quick to say, we need to do this because the boss says so. That kind of borrowed authority can wear thin after a while. All right. So don't tell people, pastor say one. Hey. Pastor say so. So what's important they want to hear is what you say. All right. So not what pastor say. All right. So don't borrow authority. If you have to all the time, then it's like some mother la. You naughty, ah? I tell Pastor Mary, I, uh, not a very totally bad thing, lah. But you borrow authority, ah? Huh? Pastor Mary, I tell her she'll cane you. What are you doing? You're the mother, oh. Hello, hello. Don't turn my wife into a bad, a devil like that, no. See, Pastor Mary, all run high. All right. You understand what I'm saying? You should do the caning also, ah? Huh? Don't wait for Pastor Mary. She'll do it also. Lah. God bless her heart. Huh? She'll do it. Somebody, nobody can, she can me at home. <laughs> play, play, and she does that. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, next one. Okay, we have Yo In. Positional leaders can't get people to follow them beyond their defined authority. Common reaction of followers to position, positional leaders is to do only what's required and nothing more. If you have 
observe leaders asking people to do something extra, stay late or go out of their way only to have the people refuse or say, that's not my job, then you might be seeing the results of positional leadership. People who define their leadership by position will find themselves in the place where people will do only what's required based on the rights granted by that position. People do not become committed to vision or causes led by positional leaders. If any of these three characteristics describe you, then you may be relying too much on your position, which means you need to work harder at cultivating influence. Until you do, the team you lead will have low energy and you will feel as if every task is a major ordeal. To change that, you need to start focusing on the next level of leadership. Okay, now let's look at the worksheet. I have a worksheet there. And uh, you can start answering the question on the worksheet. Uh, it is on page, page two only, all right? This is on page two. Uh, what do you rely on for your authority? So respond to the following. Level one position, what do you rely on for your authority? Uh, I, I tell people to do things because my boss wants it done. Yes or no? I quote or reference policies or rules to get people to do things to do things I want done. Yes or no? I tell people I'm their boss. I therefore make the decision. Yes or no? I make sure people know my title. Yes or no? Make sure people know your title. Don't know why. Uh. Some people always have to tell their title one. I am Reverend so and so. I am Doctor so and so. Some pastor, I taro them. You say, we are all pastor. When we are together, we cancel the pastor. La. Just call each other by name. Reverend. Okay. Some new people also say sorry to me after saying, hey, sorry, I didn't know you are a pastor. I say, no, my la, no. Not important. Right? You notice I don't introduce myself, Pastor Clement. Sometimes I do lah, sometimes only. Okay, I remind people that I have seniority. Yes or no? I remind people that I'm more experienced than they are. Yes or no? I tell people to do things because I said so. Yes or no? Is it all there? Sometimes I cut and paste, try to do here and there, everything run away. Okay, I tell people to do a task because it's their job. Yes or no? If you check yes to any of these statements, anyone, if you check yes to any one of these statements, you are relying too much on your position. You need to develop greater influence with the people you lead. So you'll know the difference between position and influence. You may have position but absolutely no influence. And you're kind of uh, happy people are doing it. They do it because you're the boss. All right? Or maybe because you pay the bill. Or because you know there are consequences if they don't do it. So I want to get people to do things from a position from a place of influence rather than just exercising uh, my position. All right? Okay. Level two. We move on to level two, which is permission. And permission is very interesting. Okay? We have Joycelyn. Everybody know Joycelyn or not? Joycelyn, Hello. stand up. Let everybody know you. Uh, put your mask down. This is Joycelyn. Hello, Joycelyn. Hello. Nice to see you. If it's too long, you can call me Joyce. Ooh, ah, I call you Joyce. The, <laughs> the father was seated there. La. Joycelyn was here. This, second, this, uh, this Sunday service, I was talking. The father zero, is zero, Ui. <laughs> zero, zero, 001. Okay. Sister Julie, was it your name? 
Julie, oh, yeah. I think her eyesight very good. I see from here also my eye flowery, but she can read from the screen. Wow. Oh, yes, ah. Mm. Okay. My eye is so very good, no? Far can, ah. near cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Low far. Okay. Joyce. Level 2, permission. My friend and mentor Fred Smith says, leadership is getting people to work for you when they are not obligated. That is the essence of the second level of leadership, permission. Leaders who remain on the position level and never develop their influence often lead by intimidate, intimidate, eh? intimidation. 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 Okay. They are like the chickens that... Norwegian. Oh, Norwegian psychologists. Ah, forget the fellow's name. <laughs> Holy, I don't know what's <laughs> term. <laughs> Abby, Very, um, is Norwegian name, you know, no, don't try to pronounce it. Yeah, studied in developing the pecking order principle that is commonly used to describe all kinds of groups. Yeah, so the psychologist so, uh, found that in any flock, one hand usually dominates all the others. This dominant hand can peck any other without being pecked in return. The second in, the second in the order can peck all the others except the top, ten, the top hand. The rest are arranged in a descending hierarchy, finally ending with one helpless hand. Helpless, is it? Or helpless. Helpless, helpless, helpless hand yeah. who can be pecked by all, but who can pack no one else. In contrast, permission is characterized by good relationships. The motto on this level could be written as, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. True influence begins with the heart, not the head. It flourishes through personal connections, not rules or regulations. The agenda on this level is not packing order is people connection. Leaders who succeed on this level focus their time and energy on the needs and desires of the individuals on their team and they connect with them. All right. So we are, you know where we are getting at? We are getting at this next level of leadership which basically has to do with what I call relationship, all right? Connecting with people. And when people know that you really care and uh, when people try to, uh, when people understand you, that you are not just exercising your authority, you are doing it because you are, you co you are concerned for their well-being, all right? And then your influence has begun, which I think is, uh, is very, very important. All right, the next one, we have Ryan. The classic illustration of someone who, did, who didn't do this is Henry Ford. In the early days, the Ford Motor Company, he wanted his laborers to work like machines, and he attempted to control their interactions outside work with rules and regulations. And his focus was totally on his product, the Model T, which he believed was the perfect car, and which he never wanted to change. When people started asking for it in other colors, other than black, he famously responded, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. People who are unwilling or unable to build solid, lasting relationships soon discover that they are also unable to sustain a relationship, eh? a long, lasting, effective leadership. Needless to say, you can care about people who without leading them, but you cannot lead people well without caring about them. People won't go along with you if, you, if they cannot get along with you. That's just the way it is. On level two, as you connect with people, build relationships with them and earn their trust, you begin to develop real influence with them. That makes you want to work together more. It makes you more cooperative with one another. It makes the environment more positive. It boosts everyone's energy and in work settings, people stay longer and work harder. Okay, let's uh, look, let's consider this. Now, uh, I'm sure you understand this uh, next level of leadership that has to do with uh, relationship, connecting with people, caring for them, understanding them before you exercise uh, a certain authority or ask them to do anything that uh, if you really care for them and show love, uh, then you find that your influence become uh, greater all right, over the people whom you lead. Uh, now, let's consider this is also in your worksheet. Uh, in the area of per permission, keep in mind the people you lead and the environment you help to create. Answer each of these questions.
question. Question is, are you leading some people? Uh, if you are not in church, then maybe you can consider your younger brother, your younger sister, you know, your friends at workplace, those who work under you uh, in your workplace. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, you can also apply in the church uh, if uh, you are a more uh, what we call senior member in the cell. Uh, always remember the job of influencing is not left to the cell leader alone. You play a vital role in your cell as well to help influence other members, new people uh, to, to follow Christ, of course. And secondly, of course, to be faithful to the cell, to be faithful to the church. And uh, these are all part of uh, uh, leadership uh, skill. And that gives us a certain purpose. So when you are in a cell, you don't just sit down waiting to be led all the time. And uh, you also want to play a role in helping others, okay? Reaching out to the newer ones or the less privileged one or whatever uh, position that they are in, okay? So you play a role in uh, leading together with the cell leader. So don't leave everything to the cell leader which I think uh, is very, very important. All right? So keep in mind the people you lead, the environment you help to create. Answer each of these questions. Okay. What are the questions the people I lead know that I care about them as individuals? Do they know or not? Yes or no? The people I lead can and do trust me. I know my people's personalities, talent, value, and aspirations. I think it's a good question to ask myself, ask yourself too. And uh, as a pastor, I do ask myself, you know, what, is my, what are my people's uh, talent, what, is their, uh, what is their values, do I know this person's personality, do I know his aspiration and uh, I think I need to work a bit harder to especially all the cell leader what are your aspiration do I know it's a good question to ask myself do you know the 10 people you lead in a cell do you know all uh, their their personality their talent what they're good at uh, their aspiration and so on so uh, if you do then you then you can encourage them, all right? So we find we have a few new uh, singers, right? Huh? Only recently, oh, new singer. Don't play, play, ah. Huh? Uh, one month ago, emerge, okay. But I don't think they can sing only last month. They were able to sing many long time ago. Just that maybe uh, either they hide it very well, very well, sembunyi the talent, or maybe we have not harnessed them. We have not worked hard to harness them. Okay? So I think it is, uh, very, this is very, 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 very important. So, like I say, I like what Ngai Singh is doing to the boys and the girls at the home. Uh, making them do all these things. Wow, now they are very good no? with the PA system, with the the multimedia, we have people already in our backyard uh, waiting to serve. So let's tap on this, uh, this talent that we have. Okay? So, and then the people I lead are willing to do more than the minimum for me. Yeah? I like my work and environment and so do the people who work with me. I think environment is very important. Your office, your place, your environment is very important. And uh, I have, I have uh, uh, quite a number of interactions with uh, Ngai Singh. Okay? When we go and buy durian, he buy more extra for his staff. That's very good, no? He said, my staff, I love durian. So he buy more. Then when I want to tap out rice for him, he say one more for the staff. For, I think all this very good, small little thing, uh, Small little thing. Members or your cell members, they love to come. If you create a friendly, uh, caring environment, 
I think cell members would love to come because they, they feel comfortable all right, uh, coming for, for cell. And even your office. I hope in our church office it's a good, uh, friendly environment. Sometimes we laugh, we joke, we, we share, and uh, uh, some important things uh, that the staff need to know what's happening to certain things in the church, positive or negative that they are kept informed. Uh, so they feel important if they are kept informed. All right? And so we do have, uh, we try to. And actually, if we don't have a very friendly environment, Ilan, you have to remind me and tell me how we can have a more friendly, nice environment that people enjoy working in. So if you are a boss uh, and if you are working in a workplace, I hope it's a nice and friendly environment. The same thing with your cell group. All right? Don't make it such a rigid thing. Uh, make it a very uh, friendly, nice, and people enjoy it. So, gaining permission from people you lead requires a personal connection. If you answer no to any of these questions, then you make the effort to develop relationship with people so that you can answer yes. Now, there's also uh, in other sets of leadership training, there's also what we call, you can identify leaders under two main categories. Some are task-oriented, others are people-oriented. All right? The task-oriented one, they care very little about the people as long as the job gets done. And uh, even in Christian leadership, a lot of pastors, okay, we are beginning to discern. Some pastors are very task-oriented. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you are facing anything at home or this or that. As long as this job gets done and it needed to be done. While the other side, people-oriented one, is uh, totally people. I uh, have pity on him. La. Uh, yeah, he's like that. Oh, he did something wrong. Never mind. La. It's okay. La. Then, then the job never seems to get done. No? One month or one year. Never mind. I understand him. So then I find that we need to be both. All right? We need to be task-oriented in some sense and be people-oriented in some sense. Now, I used to be very people-oriented. And now still, maybe, you still think that Pastor, uh, yeah, lovey, the villa, people oriented, mana, da, 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 and some things don't get done. All right? So now I'm learning uh, to be more task oriented, and I'm also learning to be more uh, strict with some people, and uh, you need to discipline some people, you need to correct some people. A people oriented person don't correct much one, just let it be one. Now, be a love, 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 everything love. So you need to correct people a bit more in love, of course, not simply just scold. But a task oriented, they fire you, man. Things not done, you turn out nicely, you know. So we need to take the middle ground to understand uh, some situation, you need to be people oriented. Other situation, you need to be task oriented. But the, thing, the job needs to be done. That's the thing. All right? No matter how nice and lovey-dovey people is with you, you need to get the things done. Now, a uh, long time ago, someone advised me, he said, Clement, always remember, no, the church office is not to help people. You know why? Some people come and tell me, Pastor, uh, can my brother come and work for, for church? Uh? You know, don't need to pay him a lot, one, but you know, help him uh, because he's, uh, he has, he's going through, he got emotional problem and a bit of mental problem also. Huh? Emotional, mental. So sometimes you feel like, I uh, pity him, uh, maybe get him to come in, uh, you know. There I was warned. Uh, you bring these people in, the job don't get done. Uh. Okay? Remember, church, we help people. Office, we cannot help people. Office, people help us. Uh, that's how we, we work. Okay? Huh? Last time, we have all kinds of people come in, you know, use computer, la, chit chat, la, especially Saturday. Then Ireland remind me, Pastor, cannot allow all this. La. Come in, kaka chow chow, we want to do work. La. They can't chit chat, la, talk. La. So now we are a bit more strict. So if you find 
uh, very, some strict people in the office, please understand us. We want to get work done. We don't want hello, the view. We can come down here, chit chat, hug each other, makan together. But up there is work. We want to get work done. Okay? So in the past, la, I have entertained some of this. You know, I, uh, I give him a place in church, so I help him. La. He got bu uh. Cannot find work outside, cannot do things, cannot work. So church is the best law. Lovey dovey law. Pastor must be very loving law. So therefore, actually sometimes church is very difficult because in, out in the world, uh, you get hired and fired, right? So in church, uh, before we hire, we have to think through, pay to, you no, know, because uh, if we really cannot and fire this person, uh, he won't come to church also. Some people won't come back to church. Not say fire, uh, we just ask him, we don't use the word fire, uh, uh, we just say, you know, we cannot, you know, you're not suitable uh, for us, uh, for the job. I don't think we have done a lot of that, but uh, at some point, uh, we, we have to do for some people, right? And uh, if you ask me, it's very difficult because my makeup is different. You know, very difficult to put your foot down and chop. Huh? Very difficult, but sometimes we have to. Lah. Okay, so I, some decision I leave to the committee. Committee say no, then okay, lah, let it be no. Lah. Though in my heart say, ah, yeah, pity him, ah, pity him. Okay? No la. Sometimes I think I uh, pity also. Now, the thing is this, if you pity this person, you are not protecting the rest. Okay? Like in your cell. There have been occasions you have asked some cell members to leave the cell. Never come back. Okay? The young adult, we have done that. I think uh, some of the adult cell, there are some people who troublemaker. Okay? And create a lot of trouble with other cell members, owe money and all that. And uh, we had to ask the person to leave the cell because he does not want to, to grow at all. He's just there to make use of other cell members. So if you have these people here and if you have to make that decision, you have to. Why? Not because, oh, people say, oh, you're like that, you have no love for him. No, because I love the rest. I will not allow the rest to be hindered by you. Alright? To, to be affected by you. Because you are, not, you are not a good influence in the cell. You are just, I say you will leave. And in the past, we have asked a few people to leave the church even. Uh, it's a difficult thing. I don't really enjoy it. But I'm learning. We have to. Because it's to protect uh, the rest. Correct or not? Alright? important okay so if you have been given a leadership position then you have been given your and then you have been given your boss position to lead if you earn influence on level two then you have acquired your people's permission to lead that's powerful huh? when people give you permission to lead that's powerful however I do have to caution you staying too long on this level without adding level three will cause highly motivated people to become restless. So let's talk about production. Okay, who's the next one? Production. Okay, over there. Andrea, production, level three. Nearly anyone can succeed on the first two levels of leadership. People can receive a position and develop permission with little or no innate leadership ability. It's a fact that if you care about people and are willing to learn how to work with them, you can start to gain influence. But that influence will only go so far. To really get things going, you need to win the production level. Ah! No, lovey, lovey, friend, friend. Uh, one whole group of people uh, care for each other, but I think that... I think about it. Uh, no production. Okay? Nothing done. Okay. Continue, sorry, yeah. Uh, continue. On level three, people get things done and they help the members of their team get things done. Together they produce results. That's when good things really begin to happen for the organization. Productivity goes up, people reach goals, 
profit increases, morale becomes high, turnover becomes low, team loyalty increases. Continue. Yeah, Organizations so. with leaders who are effective in leading on the first three levels of leadership become highly successful. They start winning, and when they do, they start to benefit from what I call the big mo momentum. They grow. They solve problems more easily. Winning becomes normal. Leading becomes easier. Following becomes more fun. The work environment becomes high energy. All right, continue. Be aware that most you, people... Because you're reading very clear, so I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, this huh? is not only a leadership class, also English class. Ah, yes. Also eyesight testing class. Oh, yes. All in one. <laughs> yeah. Be aware that most people naturally gravitate to either the permission or the production level of leadership based on whether they tend to be relationship people or results people. If people naturally build relationships, they may enjoy getting together, but they do it with the sole objective of being together and enjoying one another. If you have ever worked in an environment where meetings are pleasant and everyone gets along but nothing gets accomplished, then you may have worked with someone who gets level 2 but not level 3. But if you have worked where meetings are productive but relationally miserable, you may have worked with someone who gets level 3 but not level 2. However, as a leader, if you can add results to relationships and develop a team of people who like each other and get things done, you have created a powerful combination. Wow, isn't that important? All right, so you think of yourself, uh, moving yourself to achieve certain things. And so you need uh, these two things, permission and production. I, and uh, uh, in a way, I've... I put that uh, some people are people-oriented, others are task-oriented. It's not just lovey-dovey, have makan all the time, fellowship, fellowship. Uh, some cell can get into the danger of very inward-looking. Just fellowship, just loving each other, fellowship, fellowship, but not hating anywhere. Okay, so if you're not hating anywhere, soon the cell cannot last. Because this fellowship, uh, love each other, uh, then you become very inward looking. And then also the danger that other people cannot come in. Because you are, it's like a clique already. All right? And this clique has developed very good relationship, but not productive. They are not able to grow, uh, get things done, add new people, incorporate new souls build new people, help new people to come in because they have become a clique which is very dangerous. So you need to consider production. Now, we are all together in this. We love each other. But where are we heading? Are we producing growth? Are we doing something positive together? Or we are just plainly doing it to enjoy each other's company. All right? Okay, now let's consider which comes more naturally to you. Permission or production? I confess, me is permission. So I don't know about you. Which one comes more naturally to you? Permission or production? Why? And what can you do to improve in the area that is more difficult for you okay let's take one minute maybe you may want to fill up the blank there uh, which you think is easier for you are you naturally in the position side or naturally you're on production side okay <clears throat> if you are both then then that's wonderful you are working towards uh, uh, greater growth in these two levels. All right? That's wonderful. Okay, um, I have. Okay, when you I lead see. a productive team of people who like working together, you give others a reason to want to work with you, to follow you. For example, if you and a friend are picking players for a basketball game, 
you could choose between me and LeBron James, it's clear you, who you'd pick. The guy who wins championship, not the guy who played basketball in high school more than 50 years ago. You want a guy who can, you want a guy who can produce and inspire his teammates to produce right along with him. Okay, so in, in connecting and in developing relationship, you also need to know how to harness and pick people who can produce uh, wins, let's say in the basketball team. Or you can pick people who can add value and add uh, to the production of the team, which is very important. Now consider this, which member of your team are most productive? Uh, maybe you can write uh, which one in your cell group is most productive. In what role or with which skill are they most productive? And what can you do to improve their productivity and help them work better with the team? Write your answers below. Remember this. You as a leader, if you discover some people are productive in your team, how can you harness him, get him to improve, increase? For example, a simple thing like song leader. Okay. Huh? Pick a song leader who can song lead and who can, uh, in many ways, help you uh, in that area. Or somebody who can share the word, someone who can do icebreaker, somebody, uh, even someone who can cook very well. Uh, how can you harness on these people uh, so that your cell become, uh, hey, don't look down on food, you know. Some people tell me, cell group, uh, food not important. It's the presence of God, the fellowship of that, food not important. I tell you, I ever know some people, uh, their cell group grow uh, because good food. Uh. Not have to be a lot of food, but good food. Uh. My mother, one of them. My mother, uh, because of her cooking, a lot of people got saved. They come to eat. He, he, hey, today I'm cooking this, 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 come for cell group. What? He come up. Come eat, eat. Then he hear God's word, no? Then she got quite a few people safe, you know? So I think uh, don't pass off the food side. Yes, yes, you don't need to have wah, elaborate, uh, wah, nasi lemao, yo, laksa, yo, this after all, after all, cell, after cell group, right? Or before, let's say if you have dinner, then be a bit more elaborate. Uh, don't have a lot very elaborate but be purposeful in uh, making the makan time more specific and uh, mm, some of you if you are good at cooking and certain dish you know consider high, uh, inviting some friends uh, hey today uh, in my friend's house uh, I'm making your favorite cheesecake uh. You want to come and eat or not? Ah, good strategy. So if you have some people who can do certain things, this hospitality, uh, oh, you discover so many good food. Eh. And then she tell me who made one. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know this person can make nice chocolate cake. That one can make this, can make that. I don't talk about food now, okay? Now, <laughs> simple thing. Simple thing can be a tool to reach out and win others. All right? Okay. Uh, now, let's go on. Oh, time is catching up. We do number four. Okay? Number four. And then let's see whether we should continue. Uh, Pat, people development. Level four, people development. If you gain influence with your teams on levels 1, 2, and 3, people will consider you a fantastic leader. You will get a lot done and you will be considered successful. But there are higher levels of leadership because the greatest leaders do more than just get things done. There are so many different kinds of leaders, both males and female. They come in all shapes and sizes, ages and degree of experience, races and nationalities, from genius to average intelligence, what separates the good from the great? 
Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. Success without a successor is ultimately failure. To create anything lasting, to develop a team or organisation that can grow and improve, to build anything for the future, a leader's main responsibility is to develop other people, to help them reach their personal potential, to help them to do their jobs more effectively, and to help them to learn to become leaders themselves. This kind of people development leads to reproduction. People development has a multiplying effect. Teams and organizations go to a whole new level when leaders begin developing others. One team develops enough leaders to create additional teams. One division, operation or locations, location develops enough leaders to create additional ones. Because everything rises and falls on leadership, Having more and better leaders always leads to having a better organization. The people, development, the people development level has another positive side effect, loyalty to their leader. People tend to be loyal to the mentor who helps improve their lives. If you watch a leader develop influence through the levels, you can see how the relationship progresses. On level one, the team member has to follow the leader. On level two, the team member wants to follow the leader. On level three, the leader, the team member appreciates and admires the leader because of what he or she has done for the team. On level four, the team member becomes loyal to the leader because of what the leader has done for him or her personally. You win people's hearts and minds by helping them grow personally. Mm. What would happen if you focus more attention on people development? How would it benefit your team and your organization? How would it help you personally? How would it help you help your career? How would it help the people you develop? I think this is a good homework for you. Maybe you go back and you try to answer this, all these questions. Because Level four is about developing people. And I think as a church, we, we need to do that at every level. All right? It's a challenge to me also to begin to develop people. And uh, incidentally, my wife, is, uh, Pastor Mary, is revamping the whole uh, equipping track, uh, trying to put a few things and remove a few things. And uh, we are going to do that from, I told her, we need material from when he accepts Christ to the point where he tra we train this person to be a cell leader. So we need a comprehensive uh, uh, equipping track. Uh, so uh, Pastor Mary has been uh, working hard uh, at this, and she also trying to get things done uh, with the youth. So, our goal is always to develop people, all right? So your cell, your cell member, and your goal is to develop your cell member one day to duplicate you, yourself, all right? Uh, to uh, raise them up to be able to serve, to be able to be leaders themselves, all right? And that is uh, a challenge for all of us and a goal for all of us. Not every good leader works to develop influence on level four. In fact, most leaders aren't even aware that leader, le level four exists. They are so focused on their own productivity and that of their team that they don't realize they should be developing people. If that describes you, I want to help you. I've created some questions you should ask yourself about developing people that can help position you for success on level four. Now, some of these questions are, am I passionate about personal growth? Only people are effective in growing others. If you still have that fire within you, people will feel it around you. I'm 70 years old and I'm still fixated on growth. Okay, we need to have that fire going. Okay, number two. Can we have Catherine? Would you like to read that? Number two. Does my growth journey? Okay. Does my growth journey have credibility? The first thing people ask themselves when you offer to help them 
grow is whether you have anything to offer that can help them. The key to that answer is your credibility. In their book, The Leadership Challenge, James W. Kuzas and Barry Z. Posner expound on what they call the Kuzas Posner First Law of Leadership. If you don't believe in the messenger, you won't believe in the message. Then go on to say of credibility, loyalty, commitment, energy, and productivity depend on it. Right. Amen. So your journey, does it have credibility? It's a good uh, question to ask yourself. Now we go to Peter. Peter, we go to the next one. Number three. Are people attracted to me because of my growth? People want to learn from leaders they see growing and learning. One year at the Leadership Open, which my nonprofit organization Equip hosted at Pebble Beach, many people remarked about the incredible growth they were seeing in Mark Cole, my CEO. That kind of dramatic yet humble growth is very attractive to people. All right. The first thing we have to ask yourself before you develop people to grow, are you growing? Are you growing as a, as a leader? Right? I think it is a good question. We all need to grow. Number four. Am I successful in the areas where I want to develop others? You cannot give what you do not have. When I develop people, I try to help them primarily in areas where I am successful. Speaking, writing and leadership. Do you know the areas where I never give advice? Singing, technology, golf. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say about these subjects. I'd be wasting their time and mine. All right. Singing, definitely not for me. All right. Um, so, you need to discover where your strength is and begin to help people uh, using your strength to develop. If you, if you discover, if you, are, if you sing, if you sing and you discover some people can sing, I think you need to be more purposefully, purposeful in helping that person develop uh, that area, uh, whether it's singing or whatever it is. Number five. Have I crossed over the spend time, invest time line? Most people spend time with others. Few invest time in them. If you want to succeed at level four, you need to become an investor in people. This means adding value, but also expecting to see a return on your investment. Not in personal gain, but in impact. The return you are looking for is in people's personal growth the betterment of their leadership, the impact of their work, the value they add to the team and organization. I learned this lesson at age 40 when I realized my time was limited and I could not work any harder or longer than I already was. I'll tell you more about this in the second lesson. The only solution was to reproduce myself by investing in others. As they, get, as they got better, the team got better. And so did I. Amen. Very good. We jump over to Ronnie. Here we go. Do I have a teachable way of life? Teachable people are the best teachers. To develop people, I need to remain teachable. That means wanting to learn, paying attention to what I learn, desiring to share what I learn, and knowing with whom to share it. Okay, go to number seven also. Am I willing to be vulnerable, a vulnerable role model and coach? Developing people by investing in them doesn't mean pretending you have all the answers. It means being authentic, admitting what you don't know as much as what you do know, and learning as much as you can from people you are developing. Learning is a two-way street. Continuing to develop myself as I develop others brings me great joy. All right. So you are growing. The people whom, who are following you, they are also growing. And together, we can learn together. We can grow together. We can build each other's life. All right. And that kind of connection is so important. Number eight. Okay, number eight. Do the people I develop succeed? 
The ultimate goal in developing people is to help them transform their lives. Teaching may help someone's life improve. True development helps an individual's life change. How can you tell if that's happened? The, the people you have invested in succeeds. Not only is that the greatest sign of transformation, it's the greatest reward to a leader who develops people. Amen. When others succeed, uh, it should give you uh, great satisfaction. Just like your children. If your children do well, it gives you great uh, satisfaction. Don't, don't have that kind of, uh, you know, uh, thumbing them down to make yourself look better. But to build others uh, to do better than you or even to be productive, uh, and some may even be more productive than you, it is a great uh, joy. Okay, uh, let's go to that. Co uh, consider how prepared are you to develop leaders? Answer the following. I'm passionate about my personal growth. My growth journey as a leader has credibility, meaning you are growing. Okay, People are attracted to me because I'm growing. I'm successful in the area where I want to develop others. I now invest time in people, not just spend time with them. I am a teachable person. I'm willing to be authentic and vulnerable with the people I coach. When I develop people, they experience greater success. Now, you can go back and do some of this homework. How did you do? The more yes you can honestly answer to the eighth question, the better your position to develop people. If you if your no's outnumber your yeses, don't lose heart. Make growth your goal to set you up for future success on level four. You won't regret it because this is where long-term success occurs. Your commitment to developing leaders will ensure ongoing growth in the organization, in the people you lead, and in your leadership impact. Do whatever you can to achieve and stay on this level. I would like you to really pray about this, uh, that if God will show you somebody all right, uh, that you would like to invest time in, taking him out and uh, fellowship with him, ask about his spiritual life, ask about his goal, his vision, and so on. And uh, Also, when we talk about leadership and mentoring, uh, it is not just spiritual. Uh, I have heard also about business mentoring. Uh, people mentoring younger ones in the area of business. Uh, if you are a salesperson, if you are a banker, if you are a lawyer, you can also mentor, mentor somebody who is uh, younger than you and bring them up in a certain level. So if God ever lay this upon your heart, you know, by all means, I will uh, encourage you uh, to do that. You'll be surprised. Uh, not everybody has business acumen. Not everybody has that gifting. All right? even, even a lawyer. I know my, my daughter is a lawyer and she also often tells me some of the young ones that come in. Uh, they, they are good in the classroom. But it's a different ball game when you go out there, when you meet clients, when you meet people, how you present yourself, how you talk, and all this need. Uh, uh, some people say common sense, but uh, some who cannot need mentor to help them. To, uh, you know, so uh, don't just think of, oh, I'm a successful businessman, uh, let me make all the money. But you can. Uh, I've actually heard of groups who mentor others in the area of business. Okay, we will stop here because uh, I promised to start at 6.30, but uh, we have exceeded time. But if you come on time, we can finish on time. So uh, we had to start late today. So pardon me, uh, we, we, we ended a bit late. I know you have function after this. Today's Mother's Day, all right. I know you have planned for mother. Uh, okay, any sh quick question? Three second question, I'll give you a three question answer. Okay, 23rd May, what's going to happen? I will let you know. I don't really fancy Zoom or YouTube because there's little interaction. Let's see what happens, okay? Uh, 
This MCO is until when? Uh? Or oh, last day, 23rd? Uh? We do 24th. Uh? But I have a feeling they were, they were, the cases went down. Temporary. Uh. <laughs> How many cases today? Para eight. Hey, went down 20, 20, 30. Oh, 3,007. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so much. And see you again sometime. All right.